Today, I am excited to share the Word of God with you, so let's get started. Five ways to (laughs) de-stress. Learn to practice shrug therapy. (laughs) We're all gonna learn today how to do shrug therapy. My son bought me a new coffee pot, and uh, it pretty much does everything for you, except put the pot under where the coffee's coming out. (laughs) It doesn't do that. And it doesn't put the filter. Now, there's a filter that you can just leave in there all the time, but I don't like that one. So if you're gonna use paper filters, you gotta put it in. But I mean, it grinds the coffee. It just, it does everything. So I recently made a pot of coffee, but somehow or another, I didn't get the pot all the way under. And I left the room and went somewhere else, and it's a big pot. So needless to say, when I came back, I had this. And no, I didn't have time that morning to mess with it. I looked at it. I can honestly tell you that I did not feel one thing. I just went. That is shrug therapy. Amen? Now, I cleaned it up. I didn't like it, but I've wasted enough of my life getting in a full-on fit. Does anybody know what a full-on female fit is? All right. I mean, getting in a full-on fit over something that I couldn't do anything about. Don't try to control things that are out of your control. My daughter says a lot, It is what it is. And usually when she says it, she'll go like this. (laughs) Hey, this is gonna help you. Come on, let's practice. (laughs) You guys look cute. (laughs) Oh, well. Dave does it a different way. He says, I'm not impressed. (laughs) He always says, if you're not impressed, you can't get oppressed, but See, even when he says that, there's a a body language. I'm not impressed. It's shrug therapy. It's like, yeah, I'm not taking that on. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't care. But what it means is that you're casting your care. And guess what? God cannot and will not take care of us until we cast our care. Cast all of your care, all of your concerns upon me once and for all, for I care about you. The second thing that you can practice is staying in your comfort zone. Five ways to de-stress. Practice shrug therapy. Number two, stay in your comfort zone. Now, that doesn't mean that we never do anything difficult, but it does mean that we recognize our limits and we respect them. In other words, stop trying to do stuff that you're lousy at. (laughs) Amen? You just don't know what a mess we would have if I went home and tried to make a piece of clothes or or bake some real fancy dessert, you know? I got this itch on me a couple of years ago, and I thought, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some regular stuff. I get like that sometimes if I've just like done too many meetings or something in a row, you know, it's like, and see, even that, it's like, it's not even good for me to just be in a spiritual zone all the time. I need to be in a normal zone too. And uh, so when I get like that, if I get really tired and I just overdosed on spirituality, then Sometimes I want to get domestic, which is a joke because I'm not like, that's just like not kind of like my thing. And uh, so I, I got cookbooks and I went out and I bought, you don't even want to know how much money I spent on spices. I mean, I got every kind of spice that you could possibly imagine. And my daughter's like, what are you going to do with that? I'm gonna start cooking. It'll be good for me to cook. I'm gonna enjoy this. It'll be good. 
So I decided I was going to make Dave and I a tuna casserole because we used to really like tuna casserole. And that's pretty easy, you know, like noodles, soup, tuna, cheese. It's not hard to make. And somehow or another, the thing turned out like glue. I mean, it was bad. Well, you know what? The spices are all still in the rack. And I've returned to my comfort zone and my strength because I can do this. I mean, I need a break from it, but this is where I'm comfortable. I'm not uncomfortable up here. You guys don't make me nervous. I mean, this is fine for me, but I would be stressed out if I was having to bake a cake and make Dave a pair of shorts or something. That would just be a <laughs> nightmare. But stay in your comfort zone and don't think you have to compare yourself with somebody else. My gosh, that creates so much stress when we think we have to do what everybody else is doing. And let me tell you something, no matter what somebody else is doing, if they like it, they're going to think the whole world should do it. And if you don't stand up for yourself, <laughs> you're going to spend your life doing a bunch of stuff that you hate and despise and then feel bad because you're not good at it when it's not even what you're supposed to be doing. Amen? Number three, eliminate everything from your schedule that's not bearing good fruit. <laughs> That'll take another half an hour of time for you to spend with yourself. Eliminate everything from your schedule that's not bearing good fruit. Are you sitting on a committee that does nothing but argue and never makes a decision? Lord have mercy. I remember a church committee I was on one time. And they would argue and discuss what color to repaint the front door. <laughs> Boring. How much time do you spend gossiping or listening to gossip? How much time do you spend listening to other people complain about their problems that they have no intention of doing anything about? They don't, want, they don't want your help. They don't want an answer. If you gave them an answer, they still wouldn't do it. <laughs> How much time do you spend watching really stupid stuff on TV? Or maybe just flipping through the channels for two hours and never watching anything. <laughs> now, you know, I know some of you probably really like reality TV, but I don't like it. I have enough of reality, thank you. <laughs> when I watch television, I want some fantasy. <laughs> Give me a fairy tale. I want something like that is not connected to the earth. I don't want to sit and watch another family fight and almost kill each other. It took me 40 years to come out of that. Why do I want to do that? Number four, I'm just turn to the person next to you and tell them you're not going to like number four. I, I'm just letting you know ahead of time, you're not going to like this, because the number four thing that you can do to relieve stress is to exercise. <laughs> exercise is one of the best stress relievers in the whole world. Now listen, we have these little things called endorphins in our body. And they're the feel-good hormones. And they are increased when we exercise. Endorphins make us feel happy and we worry less. Exercise improves your sleep and that counteracts stress. If you exercise hard enough to sweat, it removes toxic poisons from your system. 
It can lower blood pressure, your resting heart rate, and cholesterol, and it improves your mood. Hmm. I started working out at a gym almost 10 years ago. Now I work out at home. We've got a trainer and five of us work out at home. Two of our kids, Dave, me, one of my daughter-in-laws. And, and, uh, but I recently in the spring added walking. And so I now walk four miles every day in addition to the working out. Now listen. My cholesterol is the lowest that it's been in probably 15 years. And I, I'm just telling you the truth. And I'm not trying to push off on you what I do, but well, yeah, I am. So I just, <laughs> I mean, truthfully, I am. You know? But honestly, I'm just going to tell you, you just look at me and I'm going to tell you something. I cannot believe the energy that I have gotten from walking. I mean, it just shocks me the amount of energy that I have gotten from walking. And it's not easy. I'm doing hills and it's not easy to do, but I love it. And I'm just telling you, do what you want to with it. I'm your teacher, so I'm going to tell you what I believe is going to help you. And there is a lot of stress in the world today. And we've got more coming at us than any other time in history. Just all the little devices that we have to carry around with us. You know, we don't even want to go to the toilet without our phone. <laughs> Come on, have any of you went back and got your phone and taken it to the toilet with you in case you missed a call? Well, I have too, so. And the world is not going to change. It's just ramping up for more and more and more. And one of the ways that you can really help yourself is regular exercise. So do what you want to with it. There it is. And number five, take time to relax and do things that you enjoy. Take time to do things you enjoy. Take little mini vacations, even if it's a 10 minute vacation. Take a little vacation. If you enjoy a cup of coffee in the afternoon, then take time to sit down, get away from everything, go somewhere where it's quiet, have a cup of coffee. If you enjoy getting a pedicure, then schedule where you can get one once a month. Just get away from everybody and go get one. Come on, you're worth 30 bucks or 35 or whatever it is to do that. <laughs> Look at things that are beautiful. Get out in nature and take the time to look at something pretty. Breathe and actually relax on purpose. Want to hear more from Joyce on this topic? We've got you covered. Visit us in the Joyce Meyer app or at JoyceMeyer.org today.